Hello everybody, it's Joe here and welcome to Train Simulator 2022. Today we are on the Wary Lines because the Wary Lines have had an update. For the price of £4.99 you'll get a range of things such as improved, uh, you know, like assets, so some of the crossings have been redone so they look a lot better, the sounds, the ambient sounds have been redone. Basically it's like an enhancement pack for the route. Um, there's a link in the description if you want to go check that out. We're going to be driving a class 156. The 156 we are driving is 156407 in this fabulous one livery. One of my favourite liveries from down this neck of the woods. And of course, if you're not familiar, it stands for Operated by National Express. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Maybe you knew that, maybe you didn't. Did you know? Let me know in the comments. Now, uh, we are going to be driving a service today. You can buy this scenario on Powerhouse. It costs 99 pence. Um, I don't have a link to that because the, the the Powerhouse is an app, so I don't I don't know if I can link. It's not a website. You, you know what I mean. Um, but we are going to be driving a service to Great Yarmouth. It's about half an hour to uh, to get there. We'll be calling it Brundle Gardens, Brundle Lingwood, Akel and Great Yarmouth. Uh, so, there we go, we need to set our destination to show Great Yarmouth, let's just get that round, uh, round. there we go, oh, hang on, hang on, we're on lower stopped, there we go, we're on Great Yarmouth now, yeah, lovely, so, uh, so everyone knows where we're going, that's brilliant, and I think we're more or less ready to go, do we leave at 35, we leave at 36, okie dokie, whoops, nope, we don't want to save it, because we've not done anything yet, we've got this interesting interior, yep, I love the livery, do love the livery. Do not like this interior. It's just it's just always been a bit of a weird one, hasn't it? It's, uh, yeah, not really that much of a fan. Um, I'll tell you what I'm also not that much of a fan of while, uh, while I set the cab up. I'm not a fan of the fact they're charging for the upgrade. You know, I, I just... I'm not a lover of that. You know, we, we've got things like... I mean, I don't know if, if you're following this train sim video, you... Oh, hang on. We've got the... Uh, Red signal still on. Uh, I don't know whether you're following, uh, uh, following the bus things, but like, there's a lot of the games out there where if this was an upgrade for a route you've already got, it'd be free. You know, it just would. I mean, hell, the route is not cheap. Is that our doors? Oh, there we go. We've got the signal. Right, hang on. Off we go. Full steam ahead. We've got the uh, yeah, we've got our lights on. Fantastic. Yeah, so I just I I find it a little bit disappointing from Armstrong Powerhouse that this isn't a, a free upgrade for the route. Okay, there's probably a lot of work that's gone into it, but at the same time, it's not a cheap route. This cost twenty five pound when it was new, you know, and it just. It's a little bit disappointing that it's like, oh yeah, we know you've already bought it, but if you want the upgrades, you're going to have to pay again. That, to me, is just a little bit like, mm, you know, a bit, it's just a bit disappointing. Um, I, I'm sure that the route is a much more improved uh, version, you know. I don't dispute that at all. I don't dispute the fact that there's a lot of hard work that's gone into it. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's... Yeah, I I'd, I'd just I I don't particularly agree with that. I think by all means an enhancement pack. Yeah, I know you're buying the same train again, but it's this is like an enhancement pack for their own route. You know, mm, yeah, not a fan, not a fan. Uh, but like I say, I'm sure it'll be delightful. Uh, other than that, I can't say I have any complaints at all. Uh, it looks fantastic. It really does look absolutely brilliant. Uh, we're just going past the uh, the Norwich depot. There's it. Is it Crown Point? I don't know much about this neck of the woods, it has to be said. You've got the line off to London uh, down that way. And a lovely class 90 in there. We've got another 156 coming the other way. Brilliant. Right, there we go. Let's, uh, let's have a bit of acceleration. Give him a two. Hello, colleague of mine. Oh, and is that a 170 going the other way? Just going into the depot? So it is. I thought they looked brilliant in this livery. In fact, there's not a lot of liveries out there that really, really suit the BR stuff and the, the you know, the kind of more modern stuff. Um, actually, who am I kidding? The first Scott Rail livery suited the, the Turbo Stars and the Sprinters. The, uh, oh, okay, maybe I'm talking absolute rubbish there. Maybe I'm talking twaddle. In fact, the Anglia livery, that was, uh, that was a really nice one, wasn't it? That suited uh, Sprinters and, oh, oh, okay, so every livery that suits Sprinters 
seems to suit. Central Trains, that's another one that looked brilliant on both 70s. Okay, I'll just stop talking because, uh, you know what? Oh, hang on, what's this? Am I missing an asset here? Ooh, that's pretty, isn't it? Yeah, I think I'm missing a bridge from somewhere, which is a little bit disappointing. Uh, because... I, I, do you require external things? I, I don't know if you do. Look at that. It, it looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Oh, what's uh, what's that? Where have you come from? I don't know where you've come from, but uh, never mind. All right, there we go. Lovely. <coughs> yeah, maybe it's not installed correctly. Maybe I need to run the installer again. I thought that with it being a standalone product, I thought that you didn't have any requirements. There's another bridge I'm missing there. Oh, I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to have a nose into this. Where's my bridge? Across the line off to the left there. I don't believe... Uh, do we... Can we go that way? I think... Yeah, that, that is part of the wary lines, isn't it? There we go. We'll just... Uh, we'll just coast. Let's have a look. Where are we? We're here. Uh, oh, no, it's not. Is that the... Is that the Sheringham? Oh, no. Sal House. Maybe it does go to Sheringham. I'm not too sure. Like I say, I've not spent an awful lot of time driving this route. I know we've done videos on it before. Um, but there's... You know, there's only so many times you can poodle up and down in a sprinter. You know, and it's nice. It's a nice route to have a... Well, it summed it up perfectly, didn't I? A poodle. It's a poodle route. You know, it's it's not exactly got any high speed running. And when I say it's not exactly got any high speed running, what I mean is it hasn't got any high speed running. Uh, I think 60 is about as fast as you get on this route. We've got nice jointed track sounds, however. And the cab's kind of bobbing about, isn't it? I don't seem to remember it bobbing as much in the old version, but again, it's that long since I've driven it. Perhaps I'm just imagining it. There we go. We're uh, coming along 60 mile an hour coming up. I mean, it's 60 already, but I'm assuming that means for any freight, uh, it will be dropping down to 20. So, you know, you, you just take your time. Do they have freight down here? I imagine that once upon a time they did, but I thought most of the freight was down near uh, down to Harwich Parkstone Harwich Horwich Harwich I can't even say it. Harwich Parkstone Quay. Central mm. Trains, hello. Well it's operated by National Express, but ex Central Trains. Yeah, Harwich Parkstone Quay, like Manning Tree round there, so I, I always imagined it to uh, I didn't imagine you'd get a lot of freight up here. I know you used to have some uh, you used to have some class 90s that went to Great uh, Great Yarmouth. I mean, obviously the 90 didn't because there's no electric wires, but uh, you used to get some trains from London which would uh, they'd change ends at Norwich, would they? I don't know. Oh no, of course they wouldn't. Yeah, you can get. Hang on, let me have let me consult the map. There we go. So it'd be that way, wouldn't it? Uh, Alton Broad South. That'd probably be how you get down to Ipswich. Yeah, you did used to have... Uh, that's even lower stopped. I'm not in the right place. Oh, well, yeah, because we went to Great Yarmouth and they had a Class 90 in there. Well, not a Class 90, but they had the DT and all the passenger carriages, the Mark 3s. So maybe it did come from Norwich and down. Oh, hang on. Brundle Gardens is coming up. We are going to stop there, I think. Do you fancy stopping at Brundle Gardens? Yeah, why not? We'll treat ourselves. Well, of which case, we actually need to slow down for it, don't we? Because uh, we can't just come bombing in at uh, at line speed. There we go. We'll just come uh, come gently in. Crawling in. Of course, what we've got to remember here is that these are not long platforms in the slightest. They're not long platforms, so we can't come whizzing in like we did on the last video with Stoke Loop. Because that's not going to wash at all. There we go, right, stop, stop, stop. Just leave it on two, and we'll just get to the end of the platform there. Lovely. Look at that, that's good, isn't it? That's a perfect stop there. Brilliant. We've got a nice, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of a gap, but yet, yeah, not a problem at all. Uh, I always have a look at gaps between trains and platforms now, because I've never noticed that some routes really do... Uh, tick the biscuit with uh, with how much the gap is I mean I'm thinking of one route in particular I wouldn't dare uh, wouldn't dare make comment 
Yeah, there we go. Let's uh, let's wait for our trusty guard to shut his doors. Or her doors, of course. I mean, I could have set the GSMR up, but I thought oh, I wouldn't bother. Or the NRM. Oh, hang on. Nope. Okay, that's interesting. It won't spool up with the, uh, with the notch one applied. See, I'd have thought it would have done. There we go. Right, we'll just go for a bit of full power. Oh, hang on. Wait, we won't go for full power. Heck! Bit more. Nope, nothing. Oh, the wheel slip protection's going absolutely mental. Ah, but there we go. It seems to be sticking with it. No, oh, it's holding it. It's taking it. Right, we are off. Oh, and now it's not again. Heck, wheels are going to be knackered, aren't they? We're going to have uh, grind them into 50p. 50 pence pieces. Maybe this is why we've not got timings on the left there, because normally you get the timings, like when we should arrive in Great Yarmouth. Maybe we've not got timings down here, because they think, oh, well, they've, they've set it up so it will be slippy. So, uh... They're gonna just so we will be late. I don't know. Just check nobody's uh, crossing over the cross in there. There we go. Just take it nice and steady. Bit of step one breaking. Oh, hang on. I'm gonna go through a, a signal here. Yay! We can go through. <coughs> Excuse me. Is that me not paying attention? Um, where are we? Uh, is there is there someone coming? Right, that's red. Hang on. Right. So is that signal in fact broken? It must be because this is green. Right. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I was absolutely not paying attention there in the slightest. Was I? We were getting AWS magnets. Come on, let's stop. There's too much happening now. Stop! There we go. Right, get them doors open. So yeah, we've been given a red signal before the station, and now all of a sudden we've got a green. Let's just double check. Have I ruined everything now? Have we got uh, Have we got someone coming from down here? No. Okay, yeah, I can't see anybody up here that has the problems. I mean, the route is set for us. Acle West, Acle. I imagine we'll cross over with something else at Acle. Although, to be fair, it doesn't look like we will. There's no traffic in. Okay, right, well. That'll do. Off we go. 15 miles an hour, because of course we are off to the left here. <coughs> Excuse me. Next stop, Lingwood, in two and a quarter miles. There's no point going any faster, is there? We'll just leave it in notch 3 and crawl up to 15. And just ease off a little bit. Yeah, it's such a long time since I've driven down this route, I've uh, forgotten a lot of it. I like the... Um, it reminds me of Anglia branding the uh, the what we've got under Brundle here it's like the the turquoise the Areva turquoise that's very Anglia isn't it and it's got of course the Wherry Lines branding I wonder where this Wherry Lines branding came about because it's very apparent isn't it and uh, you know some of the 156s were not in one now but it had like Wherry Lines written down the side where did this branding come from like what is it a BR you know an old British Railways branding is it was it introduced under Anglia was it introduced under one, I know that it was one, like, newer than one. Not newer, older than one. Uh, but yeah, at what point did they think, oh, we're going we're gonna to brand this as a thing? And, you know, and use it and have, like, the little logo. I don't know. If you do know, please do, of course. If, if you're clued up on the history of these lines, do let me know, because I'm always interested to learn. Uh, do just leave a little comment with, uh, with the history of these. Again, it's a fascinating area of the world. It's quite flat. I'm not going to lie, the scenery from a passenger perspective, it's very flat. 
But if you can get over the fact it's flat, we'll move the mouse cursor out of the middle of the screen, because I imagine that's uh, about to send some people over the edge. Yeah, if you can get over the fact it's quite flat, it's a lovely little area of the world, it really is. I mean, everybody's got six fingers, because, you know, on each hand, because it's, it's Norwich and, and all around there, it's, it's Norfolk. I've got a good many friends around in Norfolk, and uh, I do like to remind them of the fact that they have an ab abnormal amount of fingers on their hands. Uh, but yeah, it's it's an area of the world that I do like. I remember going on uh, on holiday uh, back when I was uh, terribly uh, a lot younger, or much younger, sorry, than what I am now. Uh, with my parents, we went on the Norfolk Broads, and I remember we pulled up somewhere in the boat and went to a pub for tea. And I believe it was Summerlayton. It strikes me, I don't know exactly where it was, because I, I was quite young, I've, I've forgotten if I'm honest, but um, from driving on Wherry Lines, that kind of fits the mental image that I have in my head. So I believe it was Summerlayton, but I could be wrong. And there was 170s going past, and I was like, I'd, I'd never seen the one operated by National Express livery before. I thought, ooh, that's a nice colour uh, of 170, and it can whiz in past. You know, and, and so there's just little memories like that, and you're always trying to piece together. Now, as well, when we went down there, we went down by train, because um, my granddad's XBR staff, uh, ex-British Rail, and uh, so he got the boxes, you know, the travel boxes. So even though it's privatised now, um, they can go anywhere with their travel boxes so long as they date the box, and that's brilliant. Um, and they can take miners, as in not miners that are digging rock out the ground, as in youths, as in obviously I was under 16, so I classed as a miner, and it's like a pound each way. It's absolutely mental uh, how cheap it is. So we went, mum and dad went down in the car, and we went down on the train, and the train we got was a 156. And we actually went to Akel, that was where we picked the boat up, so we'd have come down this line. And uh, it was a 156, but I seem to remember it being in the Arriva Northern Spirit livery. Obviously debranded, but it was in the Northern Spirit livery. And I cannot find for the life in me any pictures of any trains down in this neck of the woods being in the Northern Spirit livery. But I absolutely rem remember it clear as day. Turquoise with the green N on. You know, absolutely rem remember it clear as day. Because I remember like thinking, hang on, what on earth is that doing down here? But yeah, never been able to track which train it was, which unit it was. But yeah, I'd, I'd definitely like to go back down here. I'd, I particularly want to hire a boat, to be honest with you, and go around on the Norfolk Broads again, now that I'm old enough to, to properly appreciate it. Because when you're a kid, you, you just want to... You just want to drive the boat and put it in full power and go as quick as you can, don't you? I mean, hell, if, if you don't want to do that as a child, what on earth's wrong with you, you know? Alright, time to go. Let's, uh, let's think on and look sharp. Full steam ahead. Next stop, Akel. This is, of course, uh, a section on the route where we have got a passing point. So we might actually go past some other traffic, but I don't think I've seen anybody when we were looking at the map. Heck! Oh my lord! He jumped the barriers! Somebody get that man's number. Reg plate. That's the one, not number. Let's have a, another little shot. You know I love a good screenshot. Yeah, that's not what we need. We don't need to be driving down here and getting uh, having vans jump in the crossings. Give them a little toot. I know it looks only like a foot crossing, but still. No whistleboard, is there? Unless there was one and, you know, while we were outside the cab. What on earth's this sign here? What does that mean, then? Well, that one means... Oh! Leaves. Oh, it's a leaf warning. And that's uh, telling you there's no leaves anymore. Well, I beg to differ, there's trees there. Oh, well, obviously we don't have leaves uh, down here. Maybe these are the sorts of trees with, like, uh, maybe they're all plastic trees. Maybe they're, like, pretend ones that they've installed to make it look nice. You know, like, you might have a plastic plant in your house. 
maybe that's what we've got going on here. I've never noticed that sign before, so little signs like that must be new. Like, maybe not new to the route in real life, but new since the enhanced version. The problem that I always found with the likes of this, uh, this Wherry Lines route is it was always very focused around locos and coaches. You know, a lot of the scenarios that came with you'd be driving a 37, because for a time they were using 37s and was it Mark 2s? I think they were using 37s and Mark 2s down here. Um, I'm going to hazard a guess that they were. Yeah, I'm definitely sure it was Mark 2s. I don't think it were Mark 3s. That were a, they were a little bit too modern. Um, but yeah, so obviously being a, a railway enthusiast um, locos and coaches are absolute gods aren't they, you know, everybody goes for the locos and coaches, nobody likes the DMU but people do like DMUs, you know, I love DMUs and I found that a lot of the uh, a lot of the actual route when it came out was focused around locos and coaches, you know, I'm like, hang on I'd just be happy pootling, again we come back to that word pootling uh, up and down in a 156 or a 170 um, and we weren't able to do that early on. It's only since uh, more of these scenarios have been made. And don't get me wrong, even though I bought this scenario off Armstrong Powerhouse, it's a good scenario. You can get plenty of good freeway ones as well, however. You know, it's not all about paying for a scenario. It can be good, even if you've not parted with money. But, uh, but yeah. This is a good little scenario. I'd recommend this. It's uh, Armstrong Powerhouse 77 in the catalogue. So it's number 77. Again, I don't think I'll be able to link you to this scenario, but uh, yeah, if you, if you do download the powerhouse, uh, what's the word? Not not the client. Yeah, the client, the uh, the app for your computer, um, AP seventy seven. That is the scenario that I'm currently playing. I do believe that seven, AP seventy eight is the return journey for this. Maybe we'll do that at some stage. Maybe we won't. I don't know. There we go, Akel, just as I remember it. Uh, there we go. That is actually not a grass car park, that is actually a proper car park. A little bit disappointed that they've not put that in. Uh, yeah, I absolutely remember this is a road. So yeah, this is, uh, yeah, it's a little bit, hang on, what what on earth have they done with Akel Station? The, the, yeah, there's, there's meant to be a road here. Where is it? Hell, come on, for the money I was expecting perfection. But yeah, I remember Dad picking us up from there after we'd come down on the train. Oh, don't tell him. I've just took power before guards to give him the, uh, the buzzer. And what that is, is that is efficiency. And uh, we've got a ten minute run now between Akel and Great Yarmouth. 60 mile an hour the whole way. 7.83 miles. Come on, let's go. Hold it. Keep the power. We'll just use uh, notch 5 until this 60 sign, and then we'll, we'll... There we go. Right, notch 7. Hold it. Don't slip. No slipping, please. Oh, he's teching it. There we go. He's absolutely going for it. Brilliant. Yeah, and um, again, maybe I'm missing some assets. I didn't think that the Wary Lines required any additional add-ons, but then again, I didn't read the README, I just literally installed it. So maybe that's where I'm going wrong. Um, but for the money, I would expect... You know, I'm, I'm looking for perfection. If you're going to charge for an update, I am looking for perfection here. And perhaps my expectations are too high, you know, everyone's different, perhaps I am just expecting a little bit too much, but for a company like Armstrong Powerhouse, you're not telling me, you know, that they can't get that spot on, I mean, the Barrow and Furnace line, for example, that's free, isn't it, I believe, I mean, there's a hell of a lot of requirements, but that is a flipping nice route, I've not covered that, have I, on this, uh, partly because I don't have one of the requirements, uh, it's like this random bridge and you need to buy this route that nobody's ever heard of before um, to get the bridge oh hang on there we go how do we uh, are we just are we idling 
There we go, we'll just try and keep it and hold it around the 60 mark. But yeah, so for that Barrow route, that is absolutely, of the Cumbrian coast, absolutely spot on. Uh, the Alan Thompson Sim route for um, leads to York, the Harrogate Loop V2. I know that's not Alan Thompson Sim, that's separate, but the, ha the Harrogate Loop V2 is absolutely sensational. It's a freeware route. So, you know, if you're going to charge for these routes, make sure that they're spot on. Really do make sure that they're spot on, because otherwise people will just get a bit naffed off. Um, the thing that Armstrong Powerhouse have keyed in, you know, they've proper coined it in with this. If the Wherry Lines are a very iconic route, you know, it really is. Again, I think there's a lot nicer routes out there, because, again, this is a lot of... It's scenic, but there's a lot of... Uh, you know, it's a bit flat, like I said. I mean, if you're a passenger on there, oh, look, flat. Bit of grass over there. A couple of edge rows. It's just, yeah, it's not unpleasant. But at the same time, yeah, it's... Uh, so if you're going to charge, like I say, I'm expecting perfection. And if the stations aren't quite right like that, then we're not getting perfection, are we? Mm. There was someone on the bridge. I know you can't see him, but uh, yeah, you, you just need to look a bit closer. There was somebody waving, so we, we give him a little wave. Okay, maybe I'm lying and I just wanted an excuse to blow the horn. I tell you, it seemed like we were actually motoring along pretty fast earlier, didn't it? Oh, hang on, what's happening? Where's my train? Oh, look at that. That is a nice little... That is a nice shot, isn't it, of us whizzing along. Always like a nice shot for the cover photo. You know, draw people in, draw the masses in. Okay, maybe we're not drawing the masses in, but you know, a nice pretty picture. Everybody loves a pretty picture. Why is me? Oh, there we go. It was revving. Right, okay. Rev back up, please. Thank you. Yeah, now that we're in the open, you know, when we've got trees quite narrow rushing past us, you feel like you're going quite quick, don't you? But now that we're out in the open, you just feel very slow. I mean, when you look side on like that, it looks like we're actually getting the ammo down a bit, doesn't it? Or out the side, look. Oh, it's absolutely flashing past us. Brilliant. It's a bit like the Scarborough route, isn't it, this? But yeah, when you're in that cab just looking, stretching out in front of you as far as the eye can see, yeah, uh, it feels a lot slower. I think the 142s would have been good down here. You know, when they were coming to the end of the life we know them. Maybe not the 142s, they're a little bit past it. But the 144s, they'd have been absolutely brilliant transferring them down here and having a, a full pace of fleet. Could you imagine? On the wary lines, little 144s shuttling up and down. Little rail buses. I'm surprised they never had pacers on this, to be honest with you, because uh, it, it doesn't strike me as a particularly busy line. You know, there's a lot of 15, or there were a lot of 153s shuttling up and down at one point. I know now it's all 745s, 755s, those uh, rancid Statler contraptions. Uh, but yeah, it, it kind of strikes me as a bit of an odd one that this never had paces, because you'd imagine that they'd be quite ideal, a little rail bus. Particularly as well, let's not forget, there's a, the, out of Ipswich, there's the Felixstowe branch. That's another one, uh, which is not included in this add-on. But yeah, the uh, the Felixstowe branch down there, that again, little 142. Ah, lovely. Smash it. Now, I realise why the pace has had to go without being DDA compliant. It's very difficult. Um, I mean, I personally think it would have been a better idea if they'd have permanently coupled a 142 to a 150, you know, so that they were four carriage units, because then they're all DDA compliant, because the 150's got a DDA compliant section with uh, a DDA compliant toilet. Uh, if you're not sure what DDA compliant is, it's the Disability Discrimination Act, which of course means uh, that uh, people 
that are classed as disabled have equal rights when using uh, things such as public transport to people who are classed as non-disabled. How dare they want equal rights? Oh, shocking. Uh, but yeah, basically it means that it's fairer for everybody. And well, that's a good thing. Oh, hang on. But uh, yeah, rather than... I mean, think about it. Busy, busy train, peak time. Would you rather be squashed into a two-car 150 or, okay, pacer, not the most comfortable in the world, but if you've got a four-car train where everyone gets a seat, surely that's better than having to jam yourself into somebody's armpit. You know? Maybe I'm wrong there, but that's my opinion. I think they should have kept them. Yeah, okay, they're dropping in bits, but keep them going a little bit longer and permanently couple them to provide more carriages. But they've not done that, have they? So, you know, that's, that's always going to be just a pipe dream of mine. But uh, I think the more carriages, the better, regardless of how old they are. Right, well, here we go. We're running alongside this other line here. Uh, so these are both bi-directional single-track sections at the moment. Oh, hang on, are you... Uh, there we go, step one. So this line is, of course, another line we can drive, which comes down through Burnie Arms, that tiny little speck there, tiny little station. And uh, we can also drive that way. We've joined back with, uh, with the line. And this is so sad here because look at this. This is obviously all an abandoned uh, an abandoned maintenance depot. Maybe not a maintenance depot, but carriage sidings or sidings of some sort. It's such a shame when you come down here because I look at Great Yarmouth and think this was probably massive down here. I mean, hell, Great Yarmouth. It sounds brilliant, doesn't it? This kind of imagines that there'd be lines everywhere, there'd be full of carriages, full of wagons of some sort. You've got all this round here, which is, you know, this could have been a depot. Might not have been, but you know, it could have been. Absolutely could have been, because it, it looks from the, from the hedgerow there, like it could have been. And it's a big station, considering there's only one train an hour. Look at that. Oh, they're, they're good-looking trains, aren't they, the 156s? They do a good job. They do a brilliant job. Listen to that flange. That is brilliant. We're we going in here. We must be if it's platform four. Way round we go. Now, one thing I will be looking at is that the train does not clip the platform. No, it doesn't. That's brilliant. So they have actually done some uh, some careful testing with things like that because you do so often see it where the train goes, uh, it smashes through the platform. Again, platform widths have really, really been done well here. Look at that, that's brilliant. I mean, there's going to be a gap between the train and the platform because it's on a curve, you know, and, and you do get curved uh, curved platforms creating a gap. But yeah, we'll, we'll let them off there. There we go, let's, uh, let's bring that to a stand, preferably before we hit the buffers. Well, there we go. That is Norwich to Great Yarmouth on the Wherry Lines updated route. What did you think to that? Do you think it's worth £5 uh, to update it? Did you notice some of the updates? If you did, what did you like best about it? Do you reckon uh, it could be further improved? Uh, yeah, do let me know, of course, in the comments. If you have enjoyed today's video, click like. Uh, it helps the video do better. It's always appreciated. And, of course, if you uh, have enjoyed Tread Simulator, maybe it's the first time you've seen my channel, do subscribe and click that notification bell so you always get notified when new videos come out. There you go. See, you can do it. You can do the return trip. Yeah, thanks so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Cheerio. Goodbye for now.